Howdy. The name's Vex, and this is Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. This game was originally made in 2001 for the Game Boy Advance, and remade in 2005 for the Nintendo DS. Um, the remake was uh, mostly for the Western audience. It includes a few more, a few new mechanics, and one more case. So, let's get right down to it. At the first turnabout. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, uh, hi, Chief. Hmm, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks? Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Well, that's just not good, Phoenix. You know we can't have that. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons why I became an, an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. I feel just compelled to help him. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. Isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah. That's it. Death, despair, oh. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick. Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. Can't. Who? Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Aw, oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. <laughs> what a twist. Right off the bat. You can't have twists like this. My name is Phoenix Wright. There's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's usually the Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe, him, I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. Because I'm a nice guy. Nice guy right. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The uh, defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I, I'm a little nervous. I'm like a deer in headlights right now. And your beard is just not making any... Uh, uh. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, 
I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Ah, hands shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Well, it's obviously me. Or my chief. That's Larry. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? I know this one. Glad I read the word case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait. Uh... No. No way. I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here, man. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim... Th of course I know the victim's name. I'm not some idiot. I am just forgot temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the defendant's name is listed in the court record. Just touch the court record button to check that any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me. Please. I'm begging you. Let's hear your answer. Who is the victim in this case? Well, since they're telling me to go to the court record, head off to Cindy's autopsy report. Well. Nice. Cindy Stone. Oh, I'm the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me what was the cause of death. She died because she was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. It's probably that beard. Well, then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. I just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Alright. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. Well, I would assume it would only do that. I wouldn't assume it would take me to a world of cupcakes, but... I don't know. This game's weird. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. I don't know, he looks pretty calm and collected right there. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Oh. Well, that changed dramatically. Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Julia, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumb. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. At what's it to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what do you describe as genuinely, generally, what we mean by dumped? In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just recent. Yeah, she had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies. All of it. Lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Hmm. Indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude. No way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Those delicious candies. Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. Oh, that's way more lewd than I was expecting. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! You can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. 
Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry is away of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. My question is irrelevant to this case. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? A cheating she dog? I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, yeah, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Uh, well, did you or did you not? Eh? <laughs> well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went. What do I do? I know, I'll send him a signal. Yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so I, I, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who was your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order. Order in the court. Mr. Bain, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sod to the stand. Mr. Sod, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sod, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. I know that you know that you d I know that you are a lying piece of crap. Proceed. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment, and I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Don't worry, Phoenix. It was shoddy. It was a shoddy testimony and he should feel bad. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sod used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes. Uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin you with your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? What are you going to do to me, Your Honor? All right, right, this is it. Real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying. Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not, exclamation point? You hold the key. And send the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradiction between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. 
Mia, you're kind of doing my job for me. I thank you. Um, okay. Let's court record button and point out the contradictions in the test. And you're still there. Yeah. Alright, Mr. Sawant. Press everything until you get something right. Isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight? I find it odd you wouldn't take notice of it. Uh, eh. I don't know. He just seems strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad and yet frightened at the same time. Just like a criminal fleeing the scene of a crime. The defense requests that the witness refrain from conjecture. Of course. What the witness means is that the man he saw looks suspicious. So, what happened there? Be in a hurry. Uh, now. Nope. Nope. It was 1 p.m., eh? Are you sure it was 1 p.m.? As it says right here, it's 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to... no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, that... no. Oh. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. Ah, uh, I don't think so. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Salt? Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I... Uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Of course he would. He has to save his ass somehow. Time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm. I see, you heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. I do have this one. Sort of. I think. If I remember right. Watching a video of a taped program. Hmm. I remember it's either this one... Objection! Oh yeah, it was that one. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television. Or a video. I... well, I... <laughs> defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawant? No, I... I find it quite puzzling myself. Why? Ah, but wait. I remember now. Mr. Sawant? The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. Do you have to go to the bathroom? It really looks like you have to go to the bathroom. My apologies, Your Honor. Uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawant. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. You know, I've just gotten rid of him right now. 
Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. No? You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Of course I would. It's still shoddy. Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. No, you didn't. A murder weapon? Ah, that was... Ah, I, don't, I don't see no digitized clock right here. I see a statue. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? Ah, yeah, you with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Salt. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue was need a clock. The neck is a switch, you just tilt it and it says the time out loud. This doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? Oh, yes I do. Your Honor, there was a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. And the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly, a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... went into the apartment. You're lying, you were inside the apartment that he did on the day of the murder. Oh yeah, prove it. Prove I went in there. I'm so clever. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. I'm getting antsy. My beer is just overflowing with the anticipation. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Salt, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. You're baseless. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... that... that day... I... I never... Look, I... the clock... I heard... no, I mean, I saw... saw... Mm. Gets me every time. I hate you. It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He he killed her and he should he should burn. Burn. Give him death. Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor? You claim the sound of the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is writing on this. I better think of it through. Yeah. Think it through carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sod heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's... 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. <laughs> As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Or, uh, a few hours fast. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sod heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sod, 
try to talk your way out of this one. You silver tongued, bald headed devil. Ha, ah, ha, ha. You forgot one thing. Uh, what's he talking about? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it, I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sod. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. I lose my toupee. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal. You lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sod. Mia. I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Oh, uh, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking outside of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right. Right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Uh, yes. Wait. Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let him have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found the evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Huh, <laughs> tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Fast forward. The victim had just to return home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you. Mr. Solid? Or should I say, Mr. Dick? Sick burns, bro. Uh, we might need paramedics. Well, order. Order, I say. Get an ambulance here, stat. Well. This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expect. Mr. Payne, your client. He, uh, was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. You took down the rookie killer on your first trial. I don't think I've ever seen somebody complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only formality, but this court finds a defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. And it's sweet victory! Oh yeah. And with that, the court is adjourned. It turns out that Frank Sod was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and when, see when people were out of the house. That day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. And killed her dead. August 3rd? Oh, I'm not doing that. Screw that. Y'all know what day it is. <laughs> I still can't believe we won. Right. Good job, Congratulations. 
Uh, th thanks, Chief. I, I owe it all to you. Not at all. Not at all. You fought your own battles in there. Me, have I ever told you that's a nice Magatama you have around your neck? It's been a while since I've seen the trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no. I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Ah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. Eh. Oh, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this. Eh. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? I treat. Oh no, I can't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook, pal. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You... you made this? Well, thank you. Give it as a memento. Yo, Nick. I'm going all serious face right now. You know, it's... time to get real. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And... she was just playing me for a fool. Don't make... Don't that make you... Want to just cry? Larry. Are you so sure? Like, squeeze me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Um, Mia, that's not something we do in public. Something that proves how she felt about him? Oh. That's still something we don't show him and uh, other people in public. Ah. Oh, yeah. Right. What the heck is she talking about? Well, it's the statue. Clock. Whatever. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? It's the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. Probably just needed a clock, that's all. I think so. It's a pretty heavy clock to take track like. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Better. Bitter better. Right. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Believe in the me and the believes in you. Right? Listen, learn, grow strong, and drill to the heavens. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. So, how about dinner on me? I'll drink a toast for innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Perry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Ah, uh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Ah, Mia. Jeez. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me. Unless you got the clock he gave me. Uh, I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. <laughs>